Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the six daily habits which could be impacting the overall health and appearance of your skin. These are things that I think we're all guilty of doing at one point during the day, but they could be having a detrimental impact on our skin's overall appearance, health, and of course, our own skincare journey. Whilst there's no such thing as skin perfection, I think we're all trying to get the very best out of the skin that we have, and by eliminating these six common things, hopefully that will help you to achieve the very best skin possible. Possible. If you want to find out a little bit more on what to eliminate in your daily routine, keep on watching. Now, before we jump into this, I do just want to say this is not meant to be judgmental or shaming in any way. I have been guilty of every single one of the things that I mentioned in this list. I actually chose to wear my most brightest color top possible to kind of bring back some positivity because I think this is all about like educating and tweaking the small things we do day to day to improve our skin's overall health, appearance, and of course, our skin confidence. None of this is meant as judgment. And if, you know, if none of these things work for you, then of course, it's absolutely fine to continue doing what you're doing. Just hopefully by bringing bringing these to the fore, we can maybe just tweak things to improve our overall skin health. Anyway, let's get that waffle out of the way. Let's cut that and jump straight into the first problematic thing we could be doing in our day-to-day -day routine, and that is not washing our skin after exercise. This is something I did so, so often. Once, when we exercise, we release a lot of sweat. You also see an increase in bacteria because of the rise of skin temperature. You're exercising amongst other people, so you're touching machines, and you're wiping the sweat off your face. It's all just not the most hygienic thing. And yeah, a lot of people, myself included, don't shower using the gym facilities because sometimes they're a bit grim. We wait till we get home and that might be like a 30 minute gap. This is particularly problematic if you have acne prone skin because in that 30 minute period, the rate of acne causing bacteria can be growing on the skin and this can lead to breakouts, congestion in the skin and some of the things that we're trying to avoid. I know it's not always that easy after you've um, been to the gym, sometimes we're rushed, but the thing that I always do is to pack this, which is the CN My cellar water. Any micellar water will do. It doesn't need to be this brown, but this is my personal favorite. And some reusable cotton rounds. I then just wipe over the areas of skin where I'm prone to acne. This will be the face, the chest, and the back. That just removes any of that sweat, any of the bacteria, and the things that are going on on the skin. And it's kind of just like a stopgap before we then get home and can do our full routine. Of course, if you're showering in the gym, this isn't an issue. You can take your cleanser into the shower and you can do all of that. But if you're someone that doesn't like to, just make sure you pack a micellar water to kind of minimize the amount of acne causing bacteria on the skin. and help to prevent breakouts. I always get asked, if you do do a midday cleanse, say after the gym, what do you actually have to reapply? Do you need to do your full skincare routine again? And you absolutely don't. If you've done a skincare routine in the morning, you've locked in all of those great actives and ingredients and got the benefit from them. So after I cleanse midday after exercising, I just reapply my SPF and I'm good to go. No need to use all your other serums and things again. You can wait till the evening routine. But that is habit number one that hopefully is an easy one to fix. Habit number two is neglecting the basics. The, I've done this for so, so long. And when I taught the basics, I mean your cleanser and your moisturizer. We invest so much time, effort, and money in the serum steps, those treatments that are gonna give us some really great benefits to our skin. But then we kind of just use any old cleanser and moisturizer, who really cares, we just slap it on the skin. And that can actually add so much detriment to your routine and almost counteract some of the amazing work that you can get from your serums. I always say you don't need to splurge and spend a whole amount on a really good cleanser or moisturizer, but finding the right one for your skin type and that works for your skin is so, so important. You're looking for one that doesn't leave your skin too red after you've used it, shouldn't strip and dry the skin. Your skin should still feel supple and hydrated, not stripped and dried. And if your cleanser is doing that, it just means that all of the serums you add on after are kind of counteracting the things that have happened with your cleanser, what your cleanser's caused. Look out for pH balance, that 5 or 5.5 on the pH scale in your cleanser, because that'll just set the skin off. That's skin compatible and just means that our skin's starting off at the right pH and it's not having to, that serums aren't having to fight against what we've done in terms of our cleanser. Same with moisturizers. Make sure if you're super oily, you go for an oil-free option. Or if you're super dry, you go for one with some really rich emollients in there that are just gonna help to bring back and lock in that hydration. My go-to cleanser at the moment is the Jelly Joker by Geek and Gorgeous. Works so well for me, but it took me ages to discover this. And I used to be the sort that just picked up any old cleanser and slapped it on my skin. If this one might not work for you, I think this is great if you have um, oily or acne-prone skin, but I've left a list and I'm gonna link it up there of a video with all the best 
best cleansers out there. And there's something for every skin type so that will hopefully help you find your perfect match. <laughs> so habit number three, again, I have definitely been guilty of this, is overusing masks. We all love a bougie extra and luxury moment. And a face mask, I think, is a really nice way of bringing a little luxury, a bit of spa into your skincare routine. It allows you to just sit there for like 20 minutes, bask in all of that, and make sure that you're having that time for yourself or part of the wellness routine. I adore, adore, adore a skincare mask. However, we do tend to overuse them in two distinct ways. First of all, we leave them on for too long. This is specific to sheet masks. If when you're removing your sheet mask, it is dry, then you've left it on too long. And this actually can be dehydrating the skin because the mask can start to then take out moisture from the skin. So it's all a bit counterproductive. So make sure that you're taking off your sheet mask when there is still some dampness to it and then massage in any residual serum that's left on the skin afterwards. We also overuse them in terms of the a number that we'll use in a week. If you look at dermatologist recommendations, they actually say hydrating masks, particularly for people with dry skin, are fine to use two or three times a week. However, if you have oily, acne-prone skin like myself, then really you shouldn't be using masks more than once a week. The same goes for sensitive skin, where some of the ingredients in some of these masks can be a little bit problematic if you're prone to sensitive skin, particularly because you're leaving it in close contact with the skin for a period of time. So again, minimizing the total number of masks to maybe once a week would be preferable. You should listen to what your skin does. You know what your benefits you're getting from the mask and how it works for your skin. But my go-to, which is this, this is a salicylic acid mask by The Ordinary. I used to use every day to combat my blackheads and it was just way too much for my skin. The actives were too much. I find it stripping and drying. So using it once or twice a week for my acne prone skin is absolutely fantastic and definitely the way forward. So I just say to everyone, make sure you're monitoring the number of times you apply that sheet mask and make sure that you're not overdoing it, which could be causing problems for your skin. Number four is something I've definitely talked about before, scrimping on sunscreen. It pains me, pains me when I see people spending a fortune on their sunscreen because I just know that that's going to sit in the back of your mind. Unless you've got like Kim Kardashian money, that's going to sit in the back of your mind. You're going to be thinking, I spent so much for this product. I don't want to overuse it because then it'll run out quicker and I kind of want to get a longer period of use out of it. This is okay when you're talking about serums and, you know, cleansers, moisturizers. But when it comes to sun protection, that just isn't the case and you need to make sure you're using the right amount to get the right products. Why so I always say cheap and cheerful is the way forward with sunscreens. Make sure you're getting one that's tried, tested and independently verified so you know you're getting that SPF. But also by minimizing the total spend, you feel like you can be a little bit more lavish with it. You're not monitoring the amount that you use. You're more likely to reapply it and just everything ends up better. The one I've been using at the moment is the newly formulated Make Prem sunscreen, which is a hybrid sunscreen. I'm going to leave a link to a video I did reviewing this if you're interested in it up there so you can check that out. But the main thing is to find one that's right for your skin type and of course your budget. While sometimes in skincare splurging a little bit does give you better results, that's not the case with sunscreen. Most of the filters used in sunscreens are quite inexpensive to formulate with, so there's some really great drugstore ones. Check out the Make Prem. I also love the Garnier. Now they're cruelty free. They do some really great drugstore sunscreens. You don't need to break the bank to get that sun protection. Now, coming on to number five, and you'll see a theme here because, again, this is something I've definitely done and recently stopped doing. So this is something I did for years and years and years, and that is being hateful towards your zits. So we often see a zit, a pimple, and we want it gone. Like, it's the worst thing you can wake up to. You get a new pimple, and you think, no, that's not happening. And we do everything in our power to zap it. You often see brands using terminology like zapping the zit or, you know, all these things drying, stripping the zit, and this is just not great great practice because actually if we strip and dry the skin it takes longer to heal and it took me about 15 years to realize that the drier you make a zit the more likely it is to end up hyperpigmented scarred and taking a whole longer time to actually heal so I think we should treat our um, zits with kindness you know they need a little bit of love and they need something that's very gentle to kind of aid it on its way Salicylic acid and sulfur are my two favorite ingredients when it comes to treating zits and pimples because they'll remove some of the heal time, but they won't strip and dry the zit, which is really important. I actually covered salicylic acid in a recent video that I'll link up there if you want some of my favorite recommendations. But I love for something around a 2% concentration, which will tackle the zit, but it won't leave it stripped, dried, and inflamed, which are all things that can just lead to more problems down the line. Now, finally, in the sixth on the list of the things that we should do, but maybe we don't, is wearing sunglasses. I know this sounds super, super simple, but I've read some recent studies that show that squinting, which is where we screw up the eyes like that, is the number 
one contributor to um, crow's feet around the eyes. The aging of the eye area, often it's the first area that shows those signs of aging, is something we're all trying to tackle. And the UV rays getting to that area can be problematic and can degrade collagen and cause those fine lines and wrinkles. But also the squinting, you know, to protect our eyes from the sun can also create dynamic fine lines and wrinkles. Your sunglasses are like the number one solution to this. So if you're going out and the sun's a little bit bright, you're feeling like you're squinting, pop on your sunglasses and you are good to go. I never did this because I wear glasses and I didn't want to go for the whole prescription sunglasses expense. But I invested in a couple of really good pairs I actually enjoyed wearing. Honestly, game changing. Not only does it protect the eyes, which is just like the main purpose of it, but I do think it minimizes the amount of scrunching we do around that area and the amount of fine lines and wrinkles, which has to be a good thing. So there you have it guys, my rundown to the six common habits that we probably all do and could be um, reducing the impact of our skincare routine and leading to aging, hyperpigmentation and all the things we're trying to avoid in our skincare routine. I don't think all of these have to be eliminated overnight, but I think awareness is key. And if we can kind of minimize doing these on a day-to-day -day basis over a period of time. This has to be a good thing for our skin, our skin confidence, and of course, the things that we're trying to tackle in terms of skin concerns. I'd love to know, own up, I've done all of these things. I've done all of them over the past 15 years, and some of them I still occasionally do. So own up in the comment section if you do, because do you know what? There's no judgment, there's no shame. We're all on this journey together. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and sending you lots of love. Take care, bye.